The wood was actually cut in 1944. It's Sitka spruce, uh, all cut for the British Air Force. It was something that was intended for use in war. It was meant to be cut down for the Mosquito fighter bombers. They knew the war was waning. After paying the loggers for the wood, they gave it back. At that point, the fellows who were cutting the wood, of which the Sawchucks were one of the companies up there, he got the wood and he towed it back to Knight Inlet and set up a logging show. A logging show is basically he built floats. And then it was repurposed into a lodge, which was you know, used for grizzly bear watching. And, and it, it existed as something it was not intended to be for decades. And then we had a catastrophic fire at the lodge in 2012. The accident with the fire then threw it down to the bottom of the ocean, you know, literally into the abyss. This undersea ecosystem could then tear apart the wood and now we've dredged this thing back up onto the shoreline. The biggest thing that we noticed right away is that they were absolutely rife with holes. And then everyone explained to me about these teritos. They actually have like a clam-like head and they leave a calcium residue behind them. It would be great to see something come of it that people could say, you know, this didn't have to go into a fighter in the Second World War, it went into my guitar. There's just not many products that you can take from a piece of war to a, uh, a family business to a musical instrument. The wood seems like it's almost petrified. So hard that I could never get a straight cut out of it. It just kept on wanting to walk and move and wobble and burn out blades and just heat up so much that it would stretch all the tension out of the bands. This stuff I'm lucky to get an hour of cutting out of it and then the blade is just shot. It's toast. As you work the wood, the story kind of reveals itself through all the carving. You could have a perfectly level slab, perfectly book matched. As soon as you started working and carving the bevels aside, you would start exposing new, new voids, new caverns. This is a Vancouver Island thing. I want to demonstrate that wood that you could see as rotten or decayed or maybe just scrap is actually, it's perfectly valid for an electric instrument. This is just ultimate recycling. There's no one that has this wood anywhere else. I'm going to be working closely with Dean and the sawmill. We're going to offer a line of Torito instruments that customers can get a piece of this story, but also kind of reference whether they want one that's more decayed or uh, just has a couple of slight little imperfections into it. The imperfections are the story here, so we want to bring that to the front.